Now, can you see direct connections between words and spirit and life? Huh? Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I know my God has made the way for me. I know my God has made the way for me. Have you been wondering how to experience the more abundant life Jesus promised? Join Kenneth Copeland on the Believer's Voice of Victory and learn how to release God's life-giving words to change your life and others. John 6, 63, Jesus said, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, can you see direct connections between words and spirit and life? Huh? Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now you remember in the, in the book of Genesis, as God was creating man, and, and our authorized version says, and man became a living soul. You remember that, that verse? It's a very familiar verse to most people. When you, when you study that and, and study the Hebrew behind that, and, and particularly if you, if you don't have a chumash, then you need to get you one. It is Hebrew commentaries from the ancient sages. I mean the old guys. Even old people called them old. You understand? <laughs> I mean, these are the whole guys on the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Now, it hasn't been all that long translated into English, and it is extremely interesting. You just, oh, whoa. If you're hungry for the word like I am, man, I'm telling you, you, you can just get lost in there reading and cleaning, and, and you glean things like this. That scripture actually says, and in the commentary it says, and man became a speaking spirit like God. Whoa. Not just a living soul. He became a speaking spirit like God. Oh. I don't preach me happy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Other animals can think. And that, that's a proven fact. In fact, you can teach animals, some, some of them you can teach how to sign. But they have no authority to create. There's a line drawn between the creation and God and man. You want me to say, okay. When God ministered life to Adam, he created his physical body from dirt with his hands. But the thing was lifeless. Now you understand, nothing else ever at that point, nothing in the God class had a physical body. Angels had no physical body. God himself had no physical body. When God said light, 
be like was. That was the beginning of all matter. A material, natural, what we call natural, universe. Amen. Matter had never been revealed before. This is something new in God. He's starting a family and he's building on. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yes. Some of you didn't get that. You'll get it in the morning sometime. <laughs> now, when he created this man's body, he created it out of the dust, out of dirt. When he created man, he did it with words. Go, let's go to the book of Genesis. Go to the scriptures and see what they say. And then say what they see. Now notice this. The King James translation of the Bible uses the word, let us. A more accurate translation, and th this is important. This is one of those places that it is very important to get it right. God literally used what is translated into English, the word be, B-E, be. And when you stop and think about it, you, you, can, you can see what he was doing. He's bringing things into existence. Be made whole. So be it. And we never translated that. We just brought it on over into English as amen and left it at that. But actually, God is declaring that prayer finished. Amen. Now, when you straighten it out, see, a lot of them, as, as, as most of you know, English is actually uh, constructed different from mo most other languages. We put our nouns and verbs in, in what the rest of the world calls the wrong place. <laughs> and actually, he was actually saying, it be so. Amen. That's the reason we need to take up the practice when we pray on the scripture and we know the petitions that we're laying before God. We are saying what he said to say and, and we are believing what he said believe that we learn to say, be it done unto me as you have said. Be. B is a creative word. It is all over the Bible. And the New Testament is just loaded for a bear with B. <laughs> Amen. Light B. Light was. Now what happened on that day? We didn't have sunshine for four more days. What happened? He released creative glory. Light be. Amen. The universe began forming. Isn't that powerful? We could stop right there and just shout all evening long. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. Because, see, we're supposed to follow that pattern. You're going to see that here in a moment. Now, Let's follow that then. God said, let's go down to the 26th verse. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion 
over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, man be in our image. Have dominion over the earth. Now, can you, can you see how he's saying these things? And they're coming to pass when he says them. Now, he has a man standing here a living body because out of himself he filled words with creative power. His words are spirit and they are life. And he spoke seed words a very spirit image of himself. You hear the word spirit image? Spirit image in the image of God. Did you know that's where the, that, that's where the term came from, spitting image? It got changed to spitting image. I used to wonder, what does spit have to do with it? <laughs> but and, and they talk about somebody being the spitting image of their, yeah. of their daddy. Yeah. Well, here, this is it. He, Adam, was the spirit and image of his father. And it got changed into spirit and image. And then somebody didn't recognize it and didn't go to church, so they just called it spitting image. They just figured that's what they say it anyway. And that stuck and the other didn't. <laughs> Amen. Say, where do you get all this stuff? I enjoy what I do. I like finding out these things. Amen. So, notice. Now, get this. He's standing here talking to this shape and image, this, this body, lifeless, And <laughs> a translation that says, <laughs> and he breathed life into his nostrils. What? <laughs> what are you doing? I I'm creating a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's where religion gets kind of goofy ideas like that. The breath is the word for spirit. The spirit breath is in the words. The words carry the spirit breath. Spirit wind. Of course, to God, it's not wind because he can see it. Adam could too until he messed up his eyesight. Now, I wanted you to see this. Adam, at this point, has never heard anything. The birds aren't chirping. The angels aren't off visiting and singing something. You don't sing when God's talking. <laughs> birds are nothing else. The wind don't dare blow. God is speaking, and he's creating a reproduction of himself. And the angels say, man, what is a man? Yes. That you visit him? What is this? A man? They didn't know what a man was. They're not sure yet. That's the reason they get the manifold wisdom of God through the church. Now look what happened. These 
our first words. First words are big. He said it the first time. He don't need to say it again. <laughs> Amen. First words. And God blessed them saying, fruitful be, multiply, resupply the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. First words any human ever heard. Isn't that amazing? You missed a good place to shout right there. <laughs> And then Adam blew it off, and then God blessed Noah with it. And then later, uh, you know, as Noah messed it up uh, partly, and then two of his sons did the same thing Adam did, and they just blew it off. But one son, Seth, stayed with it. Praise God. Seth became Melchizedek, and he's the one that blessed Abraham. Abraham, be blessed. Be Abraham of the Most High God. Listen to what he called Abraham because of the blessing. Possessor of heaven and earth. How could he say such a thing? Because right there, Adam became possessor of heaven and earth. He's God's son. He's not just possessor of the earth. He owns everything God owns. He's the one that separated it, not God. Yeah. But through the blessing, we got it back. Yeah. Amen. That wasn't going to be my message tonight, but I'm glad it is. Praise God. We needed to see that and realize that that's what the whole Bible's about. Amen. The whole Bible is about God getting that blessing back as though sin never happened. That's what grace is. God's overwhelming desire to treat people as if sin had never happened. That's grace. And it's because of the blood of Jesus that it's available. Somebody ought to give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. That's shouting ground, brother. Yeah, man, after all of that, and God said, come on, boy, I'm going to bless you anyway. Now just straighten up and take it here. Amen. And give you back more than Adam would have had if he hadn't sinned. Hallelujah. Now then, understanding this is to understand the rest of God's Word because God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everything else changes, not Him. Amen. Amen. Now, everything happened in the spirit realm before anything happened in the material realm. So since when did the matter become more real than the Creator? When we catch sight of this and we realize spiritual substance, the force of life is what gives material substance it's existence. Spiritual things are more powerful than natural physical things. Amen. And we've been given this book and the teacher, the Spirit of God, to lead us and guide us in this to understand how to function in the Spirit and control matter. That's what this is about. Because Satan is bound to this material world. He is bound to what's common to man. The scripture said he, he can't get outside what's common to man. 
He can't get outside that curse. He can't call on any kind of knowledge that he had that was foreknowledge. You know why? He doesn't have it anymore. He got his memory blanked out because <laughs> the Bible said he was stripped of his anointing. He was the anointed cherub. He, you want me to just, I'll, well, I'll just throw you a little something out there. He was Jesus' personal angel, chief of the archangels. You notice some, they share some of the same names, the morning star. Did you ever wonder about that? Well, he couldn't have had that name without Jesus. That's, he wanted Jesus' place. That's the reason he said, I will be like the most high God. I will exalt my throne. Now, what, what gave him the idea he could do that? Because he knew the only thing that makes anything happen is spoken words. But what got him into such trouble? He made up his own words for his own plan. And the Bible said he was perfect in the day that he was created and iniquity was found in him. He had no tempter. He tried to imitate God because up until then, when he said whatever God told him to say, he got the same results of God. Didn't other angels bring messages in? And he said, I come from the most high God, and I give you this message, be it done unto you, me, as you have spoken in the case of Mary. And it came to pass, didn't it? That angel didn't make up something on his own. He said exactly what the father said. So what happened? The father did the work. The difference is, in Jesus, he said, it's the Father that dwelleth within. He does the works. Oh, that was big right there. You should have shouted on that one. Because it's the same Father dwelling in you. And you have been authorized to speak these words. Because you've been named after him. But you'll get in the same jam if you try to make up your own words and speak them or speak somebody else's words in fear. Aha. Uh -huh. You can't change the process. You can only change the words. And that's what Satan tries to do. So he picked words and tried to say them and raise himself up. Well, now, one reason he hates you and me so bad is because God gave us the privilege of speaking his words and raising us up. Amen. Raised us up and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. Sit on his throne with him. Ain't nobody sits on that throne except family. Amen. They've been raised up and made kings and priests unto our God who sit with him in his throne. Amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, my brother and sister, there's a man in the Godhead a man that's been through everything you're going through, a man that's seen everything you've seen, a man that ever make us intercession from you, for you, not as God, but as a man. He's been there. He knows exactly what to tell you to say. He knows exactly what to show you to do. And if he can get you to listen, he sent the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you into all the truth. And when he comes, he said, he will show you things to come. He will take what's mine and show it to you. He will glorify me and all that the Father has is mine. And I say again, he'll take what's mine and show it unto you. And man will live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Not a few little dinky words he thinks you poor little thing can handle. Every word 
is available. Jesus said, with faith, you could tell a mountain to move and it would obey you. If obstacles stand in your way, it may be time to wake up your faith. The 10-Day Spiritual Action Plan for Faith That Can Move Mountains, the newest installment of the Kenneth Copeland Ministries Lifeline series, is here to help you grow your faith. With 10 video lessons with Kenneth or Gloria, fresh new worship songs, an all-new Faith Scriptures CD by Kenneth, scripture cards for you to confess daily, and easy-to-follow written lessons. Renew your mind with God's Word and become strong and confident in the faith you have. Move the mountains of debt, sickness, bondage, or fear out of your life. Take 10 days and develop the unbeatable spirit of faith that can move mountains. Order your 10-day spiritual action plan for faith that can move mountains. Kenneth Copeland Ministries' newest Lifeline kit for just $19.95 and save 20%. Go to kcm.org or call 800-600-7395. Wake up your faith. Take 10 days and develop the unbeatable spirit of faith that can move the mountains in your life. For an additional 10% off, order your Lifeline kit online. In this broadcast today, Brother Copeland took us through some deeper concepts in the Word that really require some more meditating. So right now, this is a good time to remind you that we have a place on the homepage of kcm.org where you can watch this broadcast again. That way, you can go back and watch it, pause it, take notes, go back, review a part of it over again. While you're there on the website, check out all the outstanding resources that we have there to help you grow in your faith, grow in your relationship with the Lord. You're also going to see some good ways and opportunities to connect with other believers. God never intended for you or I to go it alone in life. You're a part of a family. And he has lots of other brothers and sisters that he wants you to meet and get connected with. So pray, find out where God wants you to go to church. And when you find that out, get in there, get connected and take part in the life that he has for you there. Amen. This is Jeremy Pearson's reminding you that Jesus is Lord. Build your faith and be transformed by the Word of God. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. Continue your studies with this week's product offer. Order your copy today and let these word-based teachings help you live in victory. Receive God's grace abounding toward you and live in the blessing. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Word Explosion, October 10th through 12th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. The 2013 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri.